Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. I am here with some amazing people. I'm so excited today. I'm here with four people. If you're seeing the video of this, you can see their beautiful faces. If you're not, don't worry, I'll introduce them to you anyway. We have just a few of our LSAT coaches here with us today. This month, we are launching our LSAT and MCAT prep department as part of our in, in our in our program called Mastering Test Prep, which is our new offering for customized standardized test prep in a way that is very different than what you're used to. You are probably used to courses that you can enroll in online. Maybe you've heard something about unlimited coaching. Maybe you have some, you know, maybe you've heard some of that messaging elsewhere. That's not how we do it here. What we give you is high quality with amazing people who align with the values of apply yourself. And so we're going to get so much more into this more information about Mastering Test Prep itself is on our website at www.applyyourselfglobal.com slash test prep. And today, what I'm going to do is introduce you to three out of our 10 amazing coaches to start. And we are here also with our COO, Jonathan McKenzie, who you will hear throughout the episode as well. So we have Olga Shaparenka, we have Marco Kim, and we have Hyun Tae Kim here with us today. Our first three LSAT coaches that you will be hearing from. And they are so wonderful that I have to just let you hear from them about themselves because I cannot do them justice. I'm so proud to have them on this team and we will speak all about their experience, what you can expect from us here at Apply Yourself and this new team as well. So I think we will kick it off with Olga. Olga, could you introduce yourself to us? Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, hello, Adrian. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this introduction, this short introduction. I feel humbled by <laughs> being named wonderful, but I guess we have an interesting combination of different people, different backgrounds, backgrounds and different personalities here. So let's all of us be wonderful. My name is Olga. I graduated from Peter Allard School of Law, UBC, last May, May of 2022. I finished articles in a big international firm, and currently I'm in an interesting spot. I'm waiting to start clerkship with the Supreme Court of British Columbia in September. I'm taking some with some part-time work, including work with advancement spot, which fitted into my schedule really, really well. And I'm glad that I can become part of this team. Talking more about my background, as you can probably hear from my accent, I was not born and raised in Canada. I came to Canada almost 10 years ago in 2014. I had different life, different career. I worked as a journalist back in my home country. And I tried different jobs, different entry-level positions in Canada before I realized that I should probably go back to school. And I will be honest with you, I felt very reluctant about going back to school in general. I'm a senior person. I was thinking, how am I going to sit with all kids who just finished their high school? How am I going to fit in? And I was thinking, what career should I choose? And my husband suggested, why don't you try law? You always enjoyed like reasoning, whatnot reading all those smart books. (laughs) So I thought, okay, I'll probably won't get in. The LSAT is so hard. There's no way a person like me can prepare and pass it with a competitive score. But on the other hand, I don't want to discourage my husband from kind of supporting me. Okay, I'll do what you tell me, but I'll prove you wrong. I won't get in. (laughs) And (laughs) fast forward, sometime I did get into good law school. I graduated and here I am now. I should probably let other coaches 
speak a few words about themselves and then I can share my outside experience, why I was kind of so, so I shouldn't say negative, but very hesitant at the beginning and how I was able to overcome it. Wonderful. Thank you, Olga. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Marco, why don't we, why don't we let you have the floor next? All right. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Olga. My name is Marco Kim. Hi there, everyone. If you're listening or watching, I'm currently a law student at the University of Western Ontario. I'll be going to my second year this coming fall. And well, currently I'm working as a coach at Apply Yourself at the time of recording. I'm also looking for some other summer work, perhaps maybe bartending or serving or, you know, something else to, to meet new people and learn new things. My background, well, I'm a, I'm a lifelong Canadian citizen, born here in Canada in Mississauga, Ontario, and living in Oakville, Ontario for most of my life. I initially wanted to get into law since high school. It was one of those things where you take a careers class and you, it's like, okay, you're in grade 10 now, time to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And it's like, oh, okay. And seeing as I didn't have much of a talent for the sciences, I'm more of a language and communication and analysis oriented person. I thought to myself, well, law seems like a good idea. And I've been working towards that ever since. After high school, I went to McGill University to for a bachelor in economics, a double mine in philosophy and world cinema. So if you ever need any film recommendations or want to talk about out ethics or something like that, you can always chat me up about that. And now here I am. I've after having a a bit of a a bit of a challenging experience with the LSAT as well and and with the courses that I had taken, I thought perhaps it was a bit presumptuous to me, but I thought, hey, maybe I can do better than, than that than than how I was taught. So that's why I'm here today. My LSAT experience was uniquely challenging, but I'll I'll save that for, for the future as it is a bit of a long story to get into at the moment. Okay. And wonderful. I believe that's, yes. <laughs> wonderful. Okay. And so, yeah, we, we will hear about everybody's outside experiences in just a moment, but first, Kinte, take the floor. Uh, nice to invite me to the, this wonderful podcast. And I'm actually from South Korea and I live almost my whole life from in South Korea. And today is the just it's been a one year, exactly one year that I have come to Canada because I left Korea on June 5th. So this is today, actually. And wow. yeah, I'm currently in the, in the University of Toronto Faculty of Law, and I just finished my first year. And I'm currently working as the Alpha coach at Apply Yourself. And I'm also doing the orientation pre orientation week preparation at the University of Toronto as well. So my journey to the Canada, I mean, the University of Toronto was kind of challenging and daunting process because this is virtually my first experience to the English educational institution. So it was very challenging and I did not have a lot of confidence from the start because I did not know anything about Canada and I did not have any relatives or friends in Canada. And I have to take a exam that is made in, made, that is made completely in English, which is very different from what I took in my, in my home country. But in the end, I made it and I want to share my experience with you. I mean, my outside experience soon along with my, with other coaches. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So we have some very esteemed people with us today. And I think what we are really interested in, of course, is your experiences with the LSAT, since that is what we are bringing to our clients, to our community here at Apply Yourself. And, you know, the reason, one of the reasons that we launched our prep, test prep department and our program mastering test prep was because, you know, Jonathan and I both had the experience of, you know, going to the big box companies for those, for that standardized test prep for standardized tests. And 
what we found is that, you know, that didn't work for us, but that wasn't, that wasn't an uncommon experience. In fact, a lot of people go through the standardized test prep route and think that something is wrong with them, that it's not working for them. There are customized and personalized ways to study for standardized tests because every single person is a different learner. Different people have different circumstances and all of those circumstances have to be considered when we're talking about really intense testing that we need to do in order to get into our dream schools. And so we decided to do things differently here. And our offering is such that you get to work with a coach that you pick So one of the reasons that we're all here getting to know each other is because you, our clients, our community, you get to pick which coach you work with. That means that you get to actually look at our website, which is live, and you get to actually look at their videos, read their bios, and hear their podcast, which we will also link on their profile pages, so that you can make sure that you're comfortable with the person that you'll be learning from. And don't worry, nobody will be offended if you don't pick them. You pick the one that you resonate the best with because you need to be very comfortable with the person that you're learning from. You need to have trust. You need to feel comfortable. You need to feel safe. You need to feel like you can be yourself. You need to feel like you can ask questions, like you can tell them what's going on with you when something is going well for you, when something is holding you back, when you're facing a challenge. Our coaches are here for all of it. It's not just about the strategy of the questions. It of course is about that, but it's also about other things. It's a, it's an, and not a, but it's the, the questions themselves. Yes. The strategy is, is one thing. And our coaches will be there for you with, to help you improve your scores with this, with the question strategy and test strategy, no doubt. Plus we actually care about who you are and your circumstances. And now maybe I'll switch it up a bit. And I will go to Marco first for your LSAT story. Now, for the full story of this LSAT has to be put into the context of, well, COVID-19. As, Fair as enough. The, as the transition to online testing and proctoring of the LSAT was a very rocky one. If you if you looked at some news reports last year, you would have you may have found that some number of scores were actually lost through some of these online tests. But my my struggle wasn't with that. It was with the online testing process itself. You see, you had to sign up on specific slots online, and the test was fully online with live proctors. And you had to install some some software on the on your computer, which some pieces of software and hardware would detect as spyware. For example, the webcam I'm using right now would not work with the proctoring software because it identified it as malicious code. So I had to quickly find a, a replacement webcam while my test was supposed to be starting. Oh, no. And and then the proctors, they they kept disconnecting and leaving. And I was waiting oh, for an hour for them to come back. Oh, and eventually my LSAT, which was supposed to start at 6.30 p.m., started at 9.30 p.m. And then here's the real kicker. By the end of it, I was on the final section about halfway through the stroke of midnight hits they did not program the software correctly they did not account for someone starting the lsat on one date and finishing it the next so when midnight hit it kicked me out of the lsat and i had to go on to their tech support line oh get God. someone who did not understand the problem wait more get someone else who finally did understand the problem for waited another hour before I could continue the LSAT and finish it. And I, st- I started my LSAT at 6.30 p.m. and ended at 1.30 a.m. Now, this is why I said it was unique challenges. I, I do not expect that any of you will, will be going through the same things I did, but it is another skill of the LSAT that you kind of need to be able to think on your feet and roll with the punches as it goes. There could always be some manner of unexpected problem that comes up, and knowing how to deal with those is a very important skill. And that's my that's my LSAT story. I ended up taking the LSAT a second time later that year and was much more prepared for these sorts of issues. And I was able to do much better on that one. Amazing. And so when it, that's a, <laughs> I'm sorry you had that experience. That's, that's tough, but that's real life, right? Our clients have had those experiences too, similar ones where, 
you know, they're interrupted by proctors or the software isn't working. And this is the reality. And so part of the coaching is going to be, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? In some cases, the tests are being moved to back to in-person, but there will still be online options in many cases. And so part of the coaching is going to be test a strategy. How do you deal with this? So I appreciate that you're sharing that. And in terms of your experience studying for the LSAT, Marco, how did you feel when you were studying for the LSAT? Now, when studying for the LSATs, I was a bit, I was, of course, overwhelmed with the many different choices. Different law schools seem to recommend three different softwares or, or programs. In the end, I went with this one test prep that had this hybrid system. You could do the, your own individual modules and you could also attend these live sessions. But the problem I found were that the live sessions were they were way too big. There were too many people, too many questions. I could barely get a word in edgewise if I had an issue that no one else saw. And in the end, I ended up doing mainly the just the individual modules. And it felt like I was just going with the problems in a, in a textbook. I felt as if, well, the the human element wasn't really there. It, it, it felt absolutely useless to what I was actually doing. If I had if it was a bit more one-on-one or if I could ask some more pointed questions, then then maybe I would have had a better experience with it. But as it stood, I it just felt like an online textbook with occasional recordings. Yeah. And so you found that you perhaps were missing that human element. And so how does that, how has that led you here? Well, let me hear as, as I said earlier in my introduction, I felt that I could I could do better in terms of teaching someone how how to go through this. Again, a bit presumptuous of me, but I think the the difference in format is very important for this sort of thing as that one-on-one approach and a much more personalized approach and with a different mindset entirely, which which is what really drew me to apply yourself in the first place. I think that that could go a long way in helping someone perform better in these standardized tests. This this sort of abundance mindsets, it's it, it's, a, it's an amazing thing because otherwise you just get so caught up in the numbers and what other people are doing in your in your practice tests. Like I was, sometimes I would do, I would end up doing two or three practice tests in within a span of a day or two. And, and it was just absolutely, that's, that's not a good thing to do. No. Because, but at the time, because I did not have this personal connection, someone to sort of guide me along, those practice test scores were basically the only feedback I had. So that's how that's affected me. And that's how this usual method hasn't worked me and why it sort of led me to apply yourself. Wonderful. Wonderful. And we're going to come back to so much of that. And I want to hear from Hyunte. What about your LSAT experience? My LSAT experience was, as I told you, quite daunting because in Korea, there is only four LSAT in one year. So there is limited amount of tasks that I can take. And for me, there was also limited time for me to study because I only have about four months to study LSAT, even though I did not have any experience about the LSAT before. So that's quite tight timeline. <laughs> Because I have to study LSAT and there was only one chance that I could take the exam. And in the whole process, I actually find basics are much more important than people think because there are very small basic content in LSAT. And people really do not care a lot about LSAT. I mean, LSAT basics, but actually I spend about two months, which is, which was my half of my studying time on only on basics. So when I built on the basics and after going on to the prep test, it gives me much more sense and big confidence on how to solve the questions. And furthermore, but the basic is not all that all you have to do to achieve the good score that you want. So from there, you need a customized teacher who could help you, who could figure out what you are having trouble with. And because of that, I had, I also had a tutor 
who helped me for one month after I finished my basics. That's why I think that apply yourself is very important because even though students and students do study the standardized or big forum test material, like all people know, that's not all you can do. I mean, there are other things that you have to do to actually improve your score. And I was very lucky to meet my tutor because he really figured it out well how to improve my score and how, I mean, the most important thing is the methodology of how I could improve my score. And telling that is very important because not many teachers or not many podcasts or other course materials do not guide you on that. And that's why I'm, I think the apply yourself is very important. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And I think that one thing that you said is that tutor that you were so grateful for made a really big difference for you. And so I think that you're, you, you were able to see for yourself how much that personal connection matters and how much that person actually caring about you in the test prep process really matters. So I'm really happy that you raised that as well. Thank you. And Olga, how was your test prep experience? It was interesting to listen to other coaches about the experiences. I can actually echo with many things they were saying. Probably like the big challenges are similar to many people. I prepared for the test myself. First of all, I couldn't find anything that would fit my schedule. I was still working full time. I, I have family. And realistically, I live in Port Moody. That's a small smaller town close to Vancouver, all actual courses were in Vancouver. So I figured out if I have to commute for an hour to, <laughs> to my session, then an hour back, then mm. I have to work. Then on top of that, everything else, I don't have time to study. And I should actually say that I was getting ready for the test in 2018, which seems a while ago, not long, not too long ago, but pre-pandemic so I actually could not find online tests apart from something very generic. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll ace it myself, <laughs> which was a very bold decision. And it took me through a lot of trial and errors. I tried three different sets of study material before I chose the one that I could use. That was also sort of, a bit of a waste of time and waste of money. I do not regret studying reading on my own and doing like doing the problems on my own with the last with the last batch of material that I found. It wasn't like I'm a grown up person. I don't need to be entertained to study. I I can stay motivated and focused. But the biggest challenge was what you are saying, Adrian. This absence of the human connection, where I can actually complain to somebody like, I'm not getting this. Yeah. Where do I go from here? Like, how should I maybe, I don't know, what would you recommend? I felt lost many, many times just because I didn't have anybody else to talk to. I was looking on online forums, how people deal with that. Again, like trying to, to find some kind of, if not feedback, but additional information. And it was very challenging. I won't lie. So i was preparing myself. I booked a test. I went to the test and I didn't do well. It was in person. I fortunately did not have challenges that Marco was sharing, which is honestly scary. I admire how he how he lived through this, how he lived through this challenging online exam time. But I didn't I did not do well and I felt very disappointed about myself, disappointed in everything in the choice that I made to even to study for the LSAT. And the biggest thing was I had to figure out what went wrong because I did mm -hmm. study. I spent time. I did not procrastinate. I did not fool myself. And I had to really, really, really search for a problem, what went wrong. And the solution was quite easy. And I think if I had a tutor who would have pointed me to this, that would have mm. saved me, again, time and bad feelings. I did not 
time myself when I was studying. That's a very, very easy mistake to miss unless somebody is actually telling you, I was timing myself when I was doing my preps at home. I was kind of watching, but I wasn't timing, timing. I wasn't creating my exam, life exam, life exam experience. And at the real exam, I did everything 100% correct, but then I ran out of time and like 30% of the questions were not even looked at. And that was kind of easy, easy, easy mistake to make unless you're being kind of guided through or advised by somebody who knows what to do. And But I did, I remember struggling after my first exam, struggling to see what was wrong, what, 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 made wrong, what went wrong, how can I do better. And after the first exam, I actually started running full tests on my own with very strict timing. And I, I retook my exam in the fall with a good competitive score. But again, looking back at it now, I was able to do everything on my own. Like I say, I'm a big girl and I had to go through many challenges in life. But I definitely think I would have benefited from a coach who obviously knows what to do and who can point me into the right direction. Even with the majority of work that I was doing done on my own, still giving you this guidance, giving you, tweaking your approach, providing you feedback, that would have been beneficial definitely for me. And why I chose Apply Yourself is exactly because of this tailored approach to students. Because as my example shows, students are different. Some come with different life experiences. And again, you're still working where you have an family with kids or you can have all sort of challenges and commitments, but you still want to try this exam. You still want to change your life for the better. And your coach or your system that supports you has to understand you and support you and not use Puka Carta to make you into a, a perfect candidate, which is honestly very often unrealistic. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for all of that, for everybody. And I know that Jonathan hasn't yet had a chance to speak. So Jonathan, you know, I know, you know, I've spoken about my experience in previous podcast episodes, so I'm not going to speak about mine, but maybe since you're here, you can, you can sort of tie together the, the experience of our coaches and maybe, you know, give us also a little bit of your experience too, leading up to the building of this test prep department with these amazing coaches who understand what it means to be a human being in a really, really isolating and often miserable, lonely process. And that's not how it is here. Everything that we do here is like full of joy and support and community. And, and this is no different. So take it away, Jonathan. <laughs> sure. It's been, it's been wonderful to hear the experiences of all of our coaches from different parts of the country. And, you know, when I was doing the LSAT, this was Back in 2006, if I'm not mistaken, I did it with what you would call a big box company. I was in a classroom with about 20 to 25 other people. We would show up two to three times a week. We would do practice tests. We would get scores. They had some software that would somehow analyze what you were supposedly doing right and wrong. But at the end of the day, that approach really wasn't effective for me in the way that I learned. And I actually ended up spending a lot of time, probably more time than I needed to, locked up in a basement doing practice test after practice test after practice test. And I feel that I really would have benefited from the coaching that Apply Yourself is now offering, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that, you know, where you know you can work one-on-one -on -one with a coach and you can, you know, individualize your, you know, the way you want to study and the way that you want to learn and really isolate those pain points on the test. So I think that, you know, having and having spoken to so many of our clients recently, having traveled across the country, having been to UBC recently and speaking to students there, there really is a, a, a need and a demand for more one-on-one -on -one coaching when it comes to the LSAT, because a, a setting where there's 20 to 30 people in a classroom or an online test, physical, whether it's a physical classroom, whether it's an online format, I think a lot of people get lost in a crowd. And a lot of people are actually, they get afraid to actually ask certain questions because I think they start focusing too much on other people in the class and not on what they're actually trying to do in the test. 
So I think that this is just a wonderful, you know, it's a wonderful development that we have all of our coaches working with us and our clients. I know are are very excited to to start working on working on the LSAT one on one and to really to, to reach their their potential with their LSAT score. Because I know a lot of people who started off with scores that they you know that they weren't satisfied with, and then with a lot of hard work, you know, they've been able to boost their scores. And I know that working one on one with a coach is definitely something that a lot of people are going to benefit from. It's going to lower their stress levels, and they're going to really see you know progress at their own you know at their own pace. And everyone is different. That's the thing. Every everyone has different learning style. People have different schedules, different educational backgrounds. Some people come from math backgrounds. When I was in law school, I people in my first year class who did an undergraduate degree in engineering and they were just math whizzes. And some people had history backgrounds. So people have very different ways of learning. So I know that our one-on-one coaching is definitely going to allow people to definitely reach their potential with their LSAT scores. Yes. Amazing. And so our offering is this. We are offering 10, 20, and 30 sessions with your chosen coach. And the reason we're offering 10, 20, or 30 sessions and not just one or two or five is because the connection is really important. The continuity is really important for strategy, for implementation, for accountability, and for support where our coaches can get to know you and you can get to know our coaches and find success. And In addition, you will have access to our online community platform where you will be able to continually support each other in the community and our coaches will be able to support you and I will be able to support you. You will also have access to weekly coaching calls with me every single Thursday from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time to elevate your experience even more and to just absolutely boost your experience. And your coaches will be welcome to that on that call every Thursday day as well. We take a collaborative approach here. We all work together. Nobody is operating in silos. And I am just so thrilled to be able to launch this and to bring these wonderful people. And I'm talking about all of you, wonderful people to our clients, to our community in order to give you exactly what you need to succeed and get into your dream schools. So as we wrap up this episode, don't worry, these coaches will be back. We're going to have more episodes showcasing each one of them because I can't wait to get to know each one of them even more than I already do. And we also on the way out of this episode, I would love to hear from each of our coaches about maybe one or two things that you're excited to bring to our clients. Yinte, you can kick us off. One of my advice to students and applicants is to build on confidence because all my life, almost all my life, I study standardized tests because almost all the tests in South Korea is standardized tests. And what really matters in the end is the confidence because it actually changed your school and your, your mental health in the end as regarded as the test school. And that really matters because it, at first you got good score if you have a confidence and more. If you have confidence, you can do other things even though you fail in the test. I mean, the test is not the end of the world. You can still find other things that really fits on you. So what I want to emphasize to students and applicants is building on, building on confidence that you're doing right things and you will succeed. Even though not in just short term, but in the long term, you will definitely succeed. So that is what I want to say to students. I think that's so important. Thank you, Hinte. It's so important that we recognize and showcase and give the spotlight to how much mindset actually matters. And that is so much of what we do here is we work on mindset, we work on confidence, but it's not blind confidence, right? It's confidence that's actually that we build in our strategy, in consistency, in accountability, and with support. And so I appreciate that, Hyuntae. Thank you. Marco. What I'm more excited to to bring to the table is I'm excited to really get to know all, all of you. Like that personal touch is is of course a very, very important part of this, but I, I like meeting new people and I hope you'll be excited to meet me. I mean, if you choose me as your, as your coach <laughs> or or listen to these podcasts or, or what have you, I like to get that variety of experience with, with people. And I think that you may find that 
that my experiences may be of of use to you and your experiences may be more useful to your to your test skills than you may think. Everyone has something they can bring to the table. I just have to sort of bring that out and show you how how it can help. Mm, I love that. Love that. Thank you, Olga. And I actually thought I had an interesting recollection when Jonathan was speaking about his LSAT preparation experience. Many students in one group afraid of asking questions. Yeah. It, re- I, it reminded me of the law school experience. I personally never hesitated to ask a question just because I felt I'm paying a lot and I'm a money paying client. They better answer my question. <laughs> law school is expensive. But I quickly realized I'm in the minority. And many students are indeed scared because they think, okay, I'm going to ask this, what everybody else will think about me. They will think that, yes. oh, I'm not smart enough. I don't get it. Everybody gets it. And that was a big issue to many students who actually talk to me privately. And we have all sort of like teamwork and yes. discussions. And I can see how this natural approach, and it's natural to compare yourself with others. It's not something that is unique, right? So I can see how this natural hesitance to not to make fool of yourself, right? To to present yourself in the best light, how it can prevent a person from learning, how it can keep you from asking questions that you need answer to in order to succeed. So I'm here. I'll, I'll be looking forward for your questions, like to your to hearing mm-hmm. your questions. And you can ask me anything. <laughs> if you choose me as a coach, we'll be one-on-one. There are no silly questions. There are no incompetent questions. And the more questions you get, I mean, the more questions you have up front, the more answers we'll have and the better you will perform. So I think Apply Yourself provides a unique platform to be one-on-one, to have no fear or no embarrassment. We're here to help. We're here to support you with all your challenges, problems, and to move you forward and to help you succeed. Wonderful. I love that. Yes. And each of you have picked up on a really important piece of our philosophy. Our philosophy has so many pieces, but this I'm I'm just so excited that each of you have pulled out a different piece of it. And I'm so excited and proud to bring these coaches to you, to have each of you join our team. We're so happy to have you. And we cannot wait for our clients to start on their test prep journeys with us. So a big thank you to Olga, to Marco, and to Hyunte for joining me today and Jonathan. And stay tuned because we have seven more coaches that we're bringing to you in our podcast episodes. And then of course, we're so grateful that each of you has joined us here today. And thank you to those of you who are listening. Thank you to those of you who are watching and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.